All right, you guys, I'm really excited about today's call. I just want to um, start off by just thanking each of you for being here today. I know there's so many things that you could be doing right now. Right now we are watching Coco Melon and eating lunch. And so we're going to see how long he lasts right here. But I'm really excited about um, this call today because I really want to focus on finding peace within your business. And I think as moms, grandmas, whatever role you are listening to this call, like I think it's often times that we get overwhelmed by our business. And funny enough, it's really not the business that's overwhelming you. It's every single plate that we're holding that overwhelms us when we think about our business. And so I really want to dive in to finding peace with finding balance within what you do for your business. And so I'm excited about today's call. Um, I'm going to have a few people be sharing on today's call. I'm still waiting for one to hop on. So hopefully she'll get on here in a second. But um, before we go into that, I would love for Melissa and Autumn, if now is a good time to talk about what's happening this next week and getting excited for, um, this next weekend. I'm really excited about this next weekend, you guys. And my birthday's the day before. So I kind of feel like you guys are all gathering for my birthday. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, but I'm really excited about this, um, retreat ladies. And I, before I turn the time over to you, I just want to give you both a wonderful, like big hug. Like I'm just so dang proud of you because I know both of you and what you're going through in your life right now and what you're carrying and what you're doing to show up even through hard times and challenging times and trials in your own life, that you are both stepping into leadership levels of growing and growth and momentum and gathering and cultivating women. And in this world today, women need women and you are doing it even through your hardship. So I'm so proud of both of you. Thank you for just taking the reins and just leading this so beautifully. I know there's challenges with that come with that too. And that can be hard to face, but I'm proud of you for just facing it head on and doing it together and linking arms when you're sideline sisters. So take it away, babes. I want to hear from you. Hold on. Am I the only one that can't hear her? Can you hear Melissa? Mm -mm. Hey, I was like, wait, is it my AirPod? But you can hear me, right? So it's not on my AirPod. Autumn, we can't hear you. Are you connected to your audio on your end? If you go down to like the mute button, there's a little arrow. Sometimes I have to change my microphone back to my MacBook Pro when it's hooked to my AirPods. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. That's so much better. Okay. So it connected to my phone for some reason and try to start recording. Oh, interesting. I've hey. never seen that before, but technology so at its finest. Okay. Now I can hear you. So go ahead. Well, what I say, I'm like, I, I feel like I'm a little out of the loop because of all the stuff that's been going on, but that's okay. Um, Melissa and I decided to do the retreat after a, what is Plexus call? And I don't think we had anybody on the call. We didn't, did we? And so we, we still did the call. And then afterwards we were like, Melissa said, we should do a retreat. And I'm like, yes, mm -hmm. yes. But so we just, the retreat, the whole idea of the retreat, it's not necessarily to be plexus focused. It's more to just kind of collaborate, to regroup, to just be together and to kind of, to build the relationships instead of focusing on all the business stuff to just focus on relationships. And so that was our main purpose is a retreat literally from life and things and just to enjoy time together. Because I feel like as women, sometimes we forget to do that, especially if there's a lot going on in your life, it's hard to kind of separate and to just enjoy things. So that was the purpose. Um, I love that Melissa's friend is going to do a sound bath. I've never done one, but I've heard a lot about them. So I'm super excited about that. And the favorite things is one of my favorite thing, favorite things to do. Um, just because I feel like it kind of shows you a different side of people that you don't normally see, especially when they bring stuff that you're like, oh, I had no idea that you liked to do this or this was an interest to you. So anyways, that's do you want me to say anything like schedule wise or Melissa, you can take it away. <laughs> Whatever you guys are comfortable with. And Melissa, if you want I mean, to start, that's great too. I mean, you kind of covered it. 
Um, my friend is going to plan on a 45 minute sound bath. <clears throat> so it's going to be really fun. She said to just like wear something comfortable, um, have a blanket. You'll most likely we're, <clears throat> we'll all be just like laying on the floor in a room in the house and she'll have her bowls and do the sound bath. She usually does like 45 minutes to an hour. So I told her to just do 45 minutes and we'll all just be like in our jammies some laying somewhere comfortable and she'll do the sound bath for us. So I'm super excited. Perfect. You guys, I'm so excited about this. I'm excited that to see you join arms, link arms and autumn. I loved that you shared that. Like, I don't want to necessarily make this a plexus focused gathering. And I love that. I think people need to like be open to more, like, I don't want to gather you here to order plexus. I want you to come here and feel love from me and why I have love and energy for life. And the plexus kind of comes with that. Like I was telling my husband the other day, I'm like, I can't imagine my life right now, five years, fast forward to where I was at five years ago, feeling crap, like crap all the time. And literally hanging by threads, getting through my busy days. Like, do you guys ever go through your day and you're like, I have no idea how I got through today, but I swear superheroes don't wear capes. Moms do moms and grandmas do like we just, you guys, we are amazing. Women are amazing. And we just need that extra support. So I think I love that you shared that. Cause I want people to know that like, we're not gathering you to come buy the triplex or to try the pink drink. We're coming and gathering you because we want to be together as women. And every time I leave a retreat, if it's one night, even if it's a dinner or a three day night or a three night retreat, I always leave better than how I felt arriving. So I love, and I'm so excited that you two are doing this and thank you for letting Carly and I be part of this. We're so proud of both of you. And I'm excited to see whoever can be there next weekend. I know Joni, I know you can't come down. I know a one nighter is probably not worth it coming from Oklahoma, but we will get another retreat on the schedule where it looks a little longer so that you can be part of that. But, um, okay. Before I turn, I actually have asked Joni to share her experience leading up to okay. where she's at today. And I'm really excited for her to share. So once she puts her camera on or when she's ready, Joni, you don't have to show your face if you don't want to, but when you're ready, we were going to, we're going to learn from Joni today. And I'm really excited about this because Joni actually comes from, um, being a stranger to me a year and a half ago, you guys, Joni and I didn't know each other. I met her through social media and she reached out to me. I think a couple of times, Joni, now that I look back on our history, we, we talked and exchanged messages for a little bit before she ordered, but she's going to share for about 10 to 15 minutes on where she comes from and what, what's led her to this point, not just in her health journey, but being business-minded already because she's done a network marketing company. And after that, I want to kind of use her story into finding balance and peace within your business. So Joni, if you're ready, are you ready right now? Yeah, I'm ready. You take it away, babe. Hi, girlfriends. How is everybody? I'm so excited to see you on here. I can't wait to uh, hug you all in June at the conference. So, um, I, let's see, two years ago in July of 2022, I was having a lot of gastrointestinal issues. And so I looked up functional nutrition and my husband took me to a functional nutritionist and I was on a six month program and it was $7,000. And I did that from July going up until almost December, but Prior to December, probably November or so, I was looking up gut health because I thought I can't keep up with this. This is ridiculously expensive. And I, you know, I Googled blood, gut health on Instagram and Jessica and started coming into my feed. And so I reached out to her because I liked her vibe, even though I hadn't met her, I hadn't talked to her, I was liking the feel of what. I was seeing. So I reached out to her and she reached back out to me. And what, what are your issues? I'm like, I don't, I just want to know about your pink drink. I don't want to tell you all my issues. I'm thinking of myself. And so, um, I, um, I, we, we bantered back and forth. And so I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to buy your, your product. And so we, I started with the triplex and I did buy the reset, but the reset for me triggered my disordered eating. And 
I think I could probably do the reset now, but I've struggled with major obesity. At one time I weighed 282 pounds and I have to be really careful around anything that's like a starvation type diet because it will trigger um, my head. Even though I know that the reset's healthy for my body, my mental obsession with what I put in my mouth isn't so healthy. Um, so I'm just being transparent here, okay? Um, but I liked how I started to feel. And then um, I liked the idea of the healthy gut health, uh, the plant-based nutrition, the fact that everything's made in the USA. And then a couple of weeks into it in January, uh, Jessica said to me, I'm hosting a retreat in Utah. And if you'd like to, to come, all you have to do is, is get here, pay for your flight and I'll pay for your food and, and board at this retreat. And I said, okay, let me think about it. So I talked to my husband. He said, go, go for it. So I went to the retreat and I haven't felt that kind of love in years. And Jessica, you and your team, the other Jules did a phenomenal job. And I said to my husband, this is what it feels like when I first went, when I went to my first Mary Kay conference. I haven't felt that kind of love in years. And I was in Mary Kay for 30 years. And so um, I thought, man, I'm so glad I found the product, but there's so much more to it. And I was working full time uh, selling a matchmaking service. And um, I've been with that company in in June this year will be five years that I've been affiliated with it. And um, I loved it. It was very time consuming, mentally exhausting, long, late hours. And it was really hard to sustain that. So I started regularly using the Plexus. I had, I only signed up my husband and I signed up a couple, my, both my daughters, one of them, uh, didn't end up using the products even she's gone through a terrible drug addiction and um i ended up quitting my matchmaking job that i had been at for four and a half years in june because my mental health was screaming at me i could not handle a daughter using drugs living in california and i'm living in tulsa and i can't do a doggone thing about it I felt like I was having a nervous breakdown. So I um, I I worked in some spas just to try to some, I love cosmetics having been in Mary Kay for 30 years. So I went to some med spas and worked as a receptionist and selling the treatments and things like that just to try something different. And the matchmaking company called me a couple months into all that. And the two people they hired after me didn't work out. And they said, could you help us on weekends? Because they knew I was working at the spa. And then the funny thing is the spa let me go because I'm not a computer girl. And that's okay. I'm not meant to be a computer girl. I'm a people person. I'm a relationship girl. I build relationships. I help people. I'm, I'm a communicator. Those are my strong suits. And I, I recognize that now. And so then one of the women at the matchmaking company in Arkansas had to have open heart surgery. So I filled in her position. I've been commuting to Arkansas for the last few months. And in the meantime, they hired somebody for the Tulsa position. And um, then the woman got well in Arkansas and came back. And my boss says, I don't have a position for you now. And so I've been on my knees for the last year, like going, okay, all right, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And is this, is this, are these signs that I'm meant to start doing Plexus full time? but the fear of giving up really good income. I mean, just to give you an example, in January, I sold 80,000 in matchmaking and my paycheck was $10,000 for one month. 
that's hard income to walk away from. And even though that was an exceptional month, I still, you know, made good money even the rest of the month. So, um, but the stress level was hurting me. So I went to the Plexus convention last year and I took my husband with me and he could, so he could see that this was a legitimate company and he'd been using the products too. So little by little, I've been getting my information, getting my knowledge. I decided to really get hold of my health. And in the last six months since the convention, I've lost 35 pounds and I feel more confident now than ever to share the product because now I have results that people can see. And I don't, I'm just the kind of person that I, if I'm going to be about health and wellness, then I better show health and wellness. And it's still a struggle mentally because I'm not working matchmaking right now. I have absolutely no income coming in. And to go from making really good money to all, all of a sudden nothing, and I'm not, I'm old enough to collect social security, but I don't want to yet because the longer you wait, the more your monthly income will be. And I would love to work at the matchmaking company a few days a week, but that's not happening right now. So I'm just going to go to I'm, my church is having, this is really cool, next week, a two-day workshop, and Ed Milet's going to be there speaking. It's called The Life Surge, the woman that lost her arm in, the, uh, in a shark attack. The gentleman, uh, Nick, somebody that has no arms and no legs is going to be speaking. A couple of really powerful people. So I signed up for that seminar. So it's, I'm going both days. It's, it's a one-day seminar, but I signed up for both days because right now I need to fill my brain with inspiration, motivation, hope. And then um, next week, there's another conference in town with a a cosmetics company that's based here. And it I'm not planning on making that my career. I'm here for Plexus, but I'm going. I signed up for the I signed up to be a consultant to go to their conference because it's here in Tulsa. And it's like right now, I mean, direct sales, mark multi-level marketing, that they're going to talk about the same thing. And right now I'm trying to feed my brain with positive good stuff because I could clearly go into depression quickly. Because I found out yesterday that what my daughter's using is methamphetamine and her depression is lower than it's ever been. And she's starting to give away her items. And she's telling me on text that she doesn't want to take any more breaths, that this world is too hard for her. And so maybe God has me in this season that I didn't expect coming at, for a reason. And so here I am just being vulnerable. I love the company. I love our sisterhood, our people, all of you on this call. It's changed my life, even though I don't have, I'm not on the scoreboard and I don't have any success yet to show in the plexus world on stage at conference or anything like that. I know I'm doing everything I can right now to stay strong and be of service and help others. And um, I love you. And and so I've been using the products for 15 months. I got my business cards. I, I ordered uh, 250 brochures. Um, I'm setting up myself for success. So that's where I'm at. Thank you. Joni, that was so beautiful. And the most beautiful part about that is we've all gotten to know you outside of being miles apart, right? Where you don't live in the same town or the same state even, but we've all learned to love you and get to know you. And we were so glad, like what Teresa said, like you were a huge part of that retreat that weekend. And I'm so glad that you took that time out of your life to come and be with us and meet us and connect with us. And now fast forward a year, a little over a year from that retreat, I look back in the growth that you've had. And there's no doubt in my mind that through the experiences that you are going through with your family, because I know a lot of that and your daughter, 
that this community and you feeling good internally is going to be, um, what's the right word, a ripple effect on the season that you're in. And I can look at all of your faces and relate that with Joni's, you know, it might not be Joni's story, but I know all of your hardships and I know that all of you will go through a season for a reason. And I always tell myself that I'm in a season for a reason. And I don't know that reason. And Joni, we don't know that reason of why your daughter's going through what she's going through, but we know this is a season and I've been praying for your daughter. And I know every single person on this call is a God girl. And I know that they will keep your daughter in their prayers. And thank you for sharing that vulnerable space um, that you've had and that you've been going through for your daughter. So thank you so much for sharing. I don't know if anyone wants to add on to what Joni has shared, or if you want to unmute yourself and say that you can relate with her, you can take that time now to do that. But thank you again, Joni, for sharing your story. We're so glad you're here. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We're going to move forward. We only have about 15 to 20 minutes and I want this to be an open dialogue. So do not be shy. Even if you have to put it in the chat, I see some chats coming through. I see Autumn's um, note, Joni, I don't know if you see that or not, but it says, love you, Joni. Thank you for sharing thoughts and prayers for your daughter and your family. Um, but I want to move forward because this actually ties in really well with what Joni is going through in feeling like there's so many we're, we're spinning so many plates, right? Where we feel like we're being pulled several different directions and not just physically, but emotionally. Um, I mean, even what she just shared now, that's such an emotional tax on her life and feeling like she's helpless for her daughter when she doesn't even live in the same state as her daughter and doing all she can. But I, I know that I know what Autumn's going through. I know things that Melissa's going through. I know Teresa's heart, Becky, I know a little bit about what you're going through. And Carly, I know you guys well enough that I know what you're going through. And I know that many of you know what I've gone through and what I'm going through. And I have to remember that it's a season for a reason. And as I go through certain seasons, I look back and I'm like, that is exactly why I went through that. There's no doubt in my mind. That's why I went through that. That's why my child went through that. That's why my grandparent or an in-law went through that. And I'm learning that through these experiences, the only thing that unfolds is growth. And there's no doubt in my mind that I would not, I would not be the person I am today without going through those seasons. And even though those seasons are hard, I'm so grateful for that. So I want to brainstorm on how we can balance and find peace through the seasons of hard times. And that might not be a physical hard time. That might be an emotional hard time. That might be a mental hard time. That might be a time that you just don't even want to show up for your business at all because you're not showing up for your life or your spouse, or your house or your kids. And I want to help brainstorm as we are prepping into summer months, it's the busiest time of the year for most of us going from having kids in school. You guys, I only have one kid home right now and he's entertained with Coco Melon. My 12 year old will not be entertained with Coco Melon. And I want to have a plan for be the change our team here into going into summer months, busy months, times that people are going to be outside more. They're going to be wanting to feel good more. They're going to be in swimming suit season. Guys, it's not just about weight loss, feeling good in a swimming suit. It's actually feeling good to be in a swimming suit, to go to the pool, to be with your kids. That's what I'm after. I'm after about, yes, I'm going to get the swimming suit on regardless of how I look, but I want to feel good to be at the pool with my kids, to jump in the pool with my kids. But I want to find peace in doing that when I'm also working a business with the products I love. So with that said, if you have a piece of paper, I'd love for you to pull that out and a pen. And I just want you to write three things down on that piece of paper. Carly, you are exempt from this exercise because <laughs> you're driving but I want you to write three things down right now on a piece of paper of what stresses you out most about your business. Is that lack of time? Is that lack of energy or lack of motivation to look into your back office or to post about the business? Is that shame around the business? Is that um, regret or you wish you would have done this differently or you have shame maybe losing rank or points because for a long time I've had shame around myself and losing my rank and letting that rank define who I am as a leader, as a, as a person even, not even as a leader, but as a person. When I say that, like as Jessica, I had shame around that. Just three things. And I know all of you have three things. I have three things. 
And I want you just to reflect on those three things as we are talking. And I want you to have an open dialogue. If there is anything that comes to your mind, please unmute yourself. Just start talking over me or put it in the chat because I want to hear from you. But um, I have actually done this with my kids before, where if they are going through a hard time or a hard season, for example, my most recent one was my daughter in her soccer league. Um, she's been working really, really hard to become a competitive soccer player. Like the, the team that she made, it was the highest team that you can make. And we were all shocked. She got the offer, but she got the offer and we put her on the team and we saw her. I'm not going to say this in a light word, but we saw her fail over and over and over again. And I'm all about, you never fail. You learn and you grow. But we saw the look of failure on her face every time she came off the field or the time she didn't play one minute in a game. And as a parent or as a leader in a business, I have seen that same look on all of your faces of a time that you come off the field completely discouraged because you didn't play the way you wanted to, or you thought you were going to play the way you wanted to and you didn't, or you shot for a goal or an enrollment and you didn't get it. Or you put yourself out there and your coach looked at you and you felt like your coach was disappointed. That could be your leader or a family member or your sideline sister, or your upline or your sponsor. Um, I have seen that same look of shame and it's not fun. And I want you to think of your own child. Think of your own child walking off a dance recital, a basketball court, a soccer field, a swim meet. Whatever your child does, I want you to think of your child's face. And I want you to now put those excuses in that face. And what does that face expression look like? Because for me, when I see my daughter walk off that field with disappointment, with discouragement, and even tears, it brings my heart to tears. And I think, what can I do to help her replace those three excuses with three things that she is so good at? with that soccer game? What are three things? Maybe it's not even a physical thing. Maybe it's a, a teamwork thing. Maybe she is the best teammate on the team with sportsmanship. And maybe she wasn't good at that game, right? What are three things that can replace each of those reasons that you have shame around your business or that you don't like your business, or you can't show up for your business? Those three things. I want you to then put right next to that one, two, and three what are three things that are going to replace those thoughts? You can still have those thoughts. You can still have shame around your business. You can still be mad at your business. You can still not want to show up for your business. But what are three reasons that are going to replace those three reasons so that you can help your daughter or your son or your child or grandchild come off that field, maybe feeling defeated, but seeing the positive through it all. The reason through your season, right? Now, fast forward 10 months of my daughter being on this soccer team. And I know I've shared this story so many times, but to pick up my daughter a month ago and have her get in the car and say, mom, guess what? My coach who guys I'm scared of her coach is so scary. She's very intimidating. She's a retired soccer player. She's just, she's, she's scary. And I'm 37 years old and I'm scared of her. But she said, my coach, when she pulled all the girls together, she looked and pointed like this. And Avery's like, she was pointing at me, but I literally had to look behind me to be like, wait, are you pointing at me? And she's like, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble. She thought she was in trouble. And she said, Avery, I want you to stand up. And at this time she's like, oh my gosh, I'm done. Like she's already scared of her coach. She knows I'm scared of her, the coach. We've gone to the coach so many times to see how we can help Avery progress. And she said, I want you to know Avery, that you were the most excelled player of the year. You have progressed and excelled in ways I cannot express through all of your hard seasons and all of the hard games and all of the hard learning and growth that you've had to go through. And she started to cry. And she's like, mom, all that time that I have spent, not just out in the backyard, focusing on the soccer ball and touches on the soccer ball, but the private lessons we've put her in, which you guys, she paid for half for. She did chores to earn that money to hire a private coach to help her excel on that field. Every dollar's worth it, right? When you look back and you say, oh my gosh, that was so worth it. But what are you doing in your business to rethink your thoughts? She could have never trained outside in the backyard in the freezing cold weather. She could have never been down in the basement doing her soccer touches. She could have never offered to pay for half of her training lessons with a private coach. 
she could have just been like, you know what? I'm just going to stick with these three reasons and be fine with it. What are you doing right now to find balance, to help replace that shame and guilt and hate toward the business? I would love to hear from you. We have like six minutes. What are you doing right now? Just shout out ideas. Um, I'm a, hired a coach to learn more about Facebook and Instagram. I love that. Yes. And I know that Joni, her season of Facebook is not her like greatest strength, right? You know that. And you've told me that she even said today, I'm not great at computers. And instead of being like, well, I'm not great at computers. She's doing something about it. And she can replace that excuse to, I hired a coach. I'm going to find balance by hiring a coach so that I can go to a computer and understand Facebook and Instagram a little bit better. I love that. Thank you, Joni. What else? So I am expanding my knowledge. Yes. And what you're outside doing. of what I know so that I can help more people and grow. I love that. And for those that don't know, Autumn's been doing, Autumn, share. What have you been doing? I'll let you, I want you to share what you've been doing to expand your knowledge. Um, well, I've been, I've been doing a holistic gut practitioner course, um, which has been amazing. And then I realized that I needed to expand even further. So I am just educating myself more in different areas of the body and specifically the blood. I love this autumn. Yes. And you guys, we, I've seen this behind the scenes, Carly and I have, I can speak for Carly on this. Um, we have seen her behind the scenes doing this. And what's cool is autumn. The last expo that I saw you at, I was like, who is this girl? Like you were spitting out stuff that I'm like, wait, what is that true? Googling. Like I have seen you expand your knowledge with gut health and helping people. And it's going to, it's shining through. It's going to change your business. So I'm really proud of you. What else? And you can replace that with, I don't know enough about the business. I don't know enough about gut health. I don't know enough about, about helping people. You can help people because you are applying knowledge into your own brain, which I love. Okay. What else guys? We have four minutes. I want this excitement. Melissa, unmute yourself. Cause I know you have something to say. <laughs> uh, I'm reading a book called worthy by Jamie L Kern Lima. And learning about my worthiness. Sorry, it's blurry. But and today we I was reading about I also printed her workbook. It's like a hundred pages, so I'm going through it. Um, but with it the pages I read today were all about how you choose to let rejection and failure affect you or what you believe about it and reframing what your beliefs are about rejection and failure. So it was actually like writing down what you believe about failure and rejection and then writing down how you could change it to really believe that and think about that when those other thoughts come into your mind. So just learning more about mindset and rejection and failure and how it can be for you and not against you. I love that. And Melissa, I would guarantee you that one of those reasons that you put down have something to do with fear of rejection or fear of showing up and not getting what you thought you would get. I know you. So I love that. And I love that you're sharing that. And I would actually love if you shared a few quotes in our team chat about some of the things you've learned about worthiness and showing up in purpose and all of that in our team chat, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. I love that. Carly, are you in a spot to unmute yourself? Yes, I am. And it's actually, I love that you use the sports analogy because obviously I'm a huge sports fan. But Kensley's like that too, where she, well, she just gets really down on herself and she wants to be perfectionist. So she does like one thing wrong. She just like falls apart and it's so frustrating. But then now that you're saying that, I'm like, I think about that with my own business. What if I have a, a call that no one comes to? And then I'm like, well, I can't do this. I can't do phone. I can't do what is Plexus calls, you know? And I, I tell her, we even look, we've been watching all the college basketball and I'm like, Ken's our favorite player, Caitlin Clark, she went like nine for 20. That means whatever that is, 11 times, she didn't make a shot. She made a shot less amount of times than she made a, missed a shot more than she made a shot. And so I'm like, that's kind of in your business too, is not thinking it has to be perfect. It has to be this way, but understanding that some things might not go your way and that's okay. And it just means that you, you learn, like you guys were talking about, you learn and you do something different and you grow, or you look at yourself and my daughter doesn't work as hard as it sounds like Avery does. Like she doesn't work as hard at it. And I'm like, you can't, you can't, not do the things outside of your game and then expect to go to your game and like do it flawlessly. And it's the same thing for business, right? Like I, if I'm not going to invite a huge amount of people, I can't expect that people will come to my, what is Plexus call or whatever. So you have to do the things too, but also know 
you know, you're, you're never going to have perfection, but you just look at what you do and how great that is and your growth. And that's really what matters. So I, I loved, loved that analogy of your daughter. That was awesome. Well, thank you, Carly. And I loved what you shared because I know Kensley well, her daughter as well. And I know their hearts, they, they want to be perfect and we all want to be perfect and we want to show up perfectly, but that's not what we're after. You guys We're after progress, which can re- result to perfect results in our own minds, right? Like if we show up, if we do the trainings, if we get on the calls, if we show up in like imperfectly, we see progress and that's cool. And Teresa, we have a minute left, but I don't know if you can unmute yourself. Just shake your head if you can't. Okay. She can't. So, and I know Becky can't, so I'm so glad that everyone could share that they could Teresa and Becky, if you could share in my team chat, what excuse you're going to replace with one thing that you have shame around your business. I want to hear from you. Go put it in the chat. I would love to hear from you. I love you all. You guys so very much. I'm so grateful to each of you. Joni, thank you so much for sharing your heart today. I learned so much from you and Autumn and Melissa, thank you again for sharing about the retreat this next weekend. Um, and you guys, we're going to make it a great week. Next Thursday is my birthday. So please come next Thursday to this call. We're going to have an amazing team call. So I love you all. Have a wonderful day and we'll talk soon.